If you're playing CS2, there's a couple of tips you should take note of, especially if you're an NVIDIA user, to get lower input latency on your PC. While this may seem like an NVIDIA-focused guide, a lot of these tips will still work for AMD as well. First of all, in-game, head across to the Options menu, and on the Video tab under Advanced Video, at the very bottom, you'll find NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Obviously, this only applies to NVIDIA users, but essentially, I've heard people get lower input latencies by disabling this option, surprisingly even though it's said to be low latency. Your results with this may vary. Essentially, having this enabled should help input latency if you're GPU limited or CPU limited, so you should choose enabled plus boost. Your mileage with this will vary, however. For now, I'll close out of the game completely and on your desktop, simply right-click, choose NVIDIA Control Panel, and inside of him, under the Manage 3D Settings section, you should find Global Settings, scrolling down, Low Latency Mode, set this to either On or Ultra. Scrolling down, you can read exactly what this does. Then, simply head across to Program Settings and make sure that from the drop-down, Counter-Strike 2 has the same option. So, Low Latency Mode should be Use Global Setting, so it's affected by the Global Setting tab, or you can manually set it here as well. That is obviously only for NVIDIA users. However, there are a few other tips. First of all, optimizing your graphics quality settings, for which you'll find a huge guide linked in the description down below that talks you through each individual setting. However, if you're more interested in actual latency numbers, you'll find a Reddit post linked down below that details the impact of each graphics setting for input latency. The most impactful obviously being VSync, which limits how many frames go to your monitor, then MSAA, Global Shallows, and Ambient Occlusion. Obviously, shadows you won't really want to minimize as they can be a competitive advantage. However, AO and MSAA you can definitely lower quite happily. The rest of these options you're free to go through, and scrolling down you'll find some info about the testing setup as well as methodology, etc, etc. Tons of useful information here. Also, one of the mentions here is full screen versus borderless mode having no effect on input latency whatsoever, and using the disable full screen optimization settings in Windows doesn't have an effect either. This is something I've seen a lot of guides talking about doing, and if you were to try it, it's very simple. It could just be placebo, however. Enabling full screen mode in the game, first of all, is what you'll need to do, and in the games folder, we'll be disabling full screen optimizations if you choose to do so. In Steam, right click the game, manage, and browse local files. In here, head into the game folder, not CSGO, but game, and then bin, win64, here you'll find CS2. Select, right click, properties, and on the compatibility tab, disable full screen optimizations here. However, as mentioned in the guide, this isn't going to do anything, but it might actually do something on your system as long as you're playing the game in full screen mode and you have this option enabled. Some useful tips include unlocking your FPS for better input latency. For this, all you need to do is in-game, head across to the console using your tilde button, otherwise if you don't have it enabled in the settings menu, under game, you'll find in the game section, enable console here and of course you can set the keybind scrolling down to UI elements over here UI keys toggle console opening it up simply type in FPS underscore max space zero and that should uncap your FPS you can use find FPS underscore max just to see exactly what this does and of course to change your main menu frames you can use max UI on top of this enabling G-Sync increases end-to-end -end latency as it's a kind of sync slowing down or speeding up frames just to make sure they reach your monitor in a preferred way it can make your game feel smoother and it could be worth it if you enjoy the feeling. If you choose to cap your frames, whether you'd like to allow other programs like OBS to use more of your PC or to just use less power or generate less heat, there's no difference between capping your frames in the NVIDIA control panel and the game. Besides that, there's not really much else other than playing the game in your native resolution rather than higher or lower, but of course, those are all covered in the optimization guide. For the most part, that Reddit post is an invaluable resource and has tons of good information once again you'll find it linked down below hopefully you found some use out of this video thank you all for watching my name is me troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao